Hey everyone, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And today I want to take you uh, through the new SoftTube tape machine uh, by SoftTube. Uh, this is a plugin that came out about a week ago. I'm being asked a lot about it and people are asking me what I think about it. And although there's already a bunch of YouTube videos on it, I figure, okay, I'll do a video for my followers and kind of give you my impressions of this new tape plugin. Um, there's two instances of this up on the screen as you can see. Um, if you are a PreSonus Studio One user, you have a little extra bonus that now PreSonus is uh, working with SoftTube and it's the first third party uh, plugin that is part of the new mix effects engine, the mix engine in PreSonus Studio One. And you can see that on the right hand side here, this is called the Tape MT for the Tape Multitrack and I'll explain to you in a, in a little bit how this is unique to the Studio One mix engine, which is kind of cool. And then over to the left of that, we have the regular uh, instance of tape that um, that you would get if even if you're not a Studio One user by purchasing it from SoftTube. So in order for this to work with part of the PreSonus mix engine, you have to buy a license uh, of this uh, via SoftTube or through the PreSonus.com website in order for it to work. If you don't buy the license, it's not a free plugin that comes in with Studio One. You have to purchase it. Uh, so just be aware of that. So I'm gonna close that instance of of this for now. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So let me walk you through the controls of how this is kind of laid out. It's kind of simple and it's got a couple of unique features to it that's a little different than most other tape machine plugins on the market. And then we'll listen to some sound examples and then I'll kind of give you my thought of uh, what the sound of this is versus maybe all the other tape plugins that I have by Waves and Universal Audio and, and Slate Digital and so on and so forth. But before we get to all of that, if you like what you see in this video, please hit that subscribe button below. Also go out to facebook.com slash home recording made easy. And for more tips, tricks, concepts, and training around all aspects of home recording, mixing, and mastering, please go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Check out the quick mix series as well as the Made Easy series. They will absolutely help you make better productions, mixes, and masters in your home studio, I promise. So now let's head over to the tape plugin here and take a look and I'll walk you through the controls. So from a, from a control feature set, the only difference between this instance from uh, by Soft2, the tape plugin, or the tape MT that's part of the PreSonus Studio One mix engine is this little toggle switch over here on the left-hand side. Um, on, the, on the tape MT, this toggle switch does not exist, which we'll explain why in a little bit. But over here, if you were to look at this toggle switch, we can this changes the way uh, we're displaying what's going on in the, in the uh, VU meters. So when it's on level, you're actually, um, you're actually metering the input signal to the tape machine. The more you turn up the input, the more the harder you're gonna hit the tape, so to speak. When you put it on the total harmonic distortion or THD, you're actually monitoring um, how much total harmonic distortion is going on uh, in the plugin itself, okay? So we'll demonstrate that in a minute. To the right of that toggle switch, obviously we just spoke about, you have the VU meters here. To the right of that, we have the, a thing called the amount dial. And this is gonna give you um, how much coloration that you wanna have. And you can see it's labeled here with color. Um, and it gives you kind of a little warning it down here that says, warning, the high amount uh, can lead to a preferred or desire, excuse me, to a desired distortion. So in other words, the more you turn up the amount, the more color you're gonna get, the more harmonic distortion you're gonna get, the more saturation you're gonna get, okay? We'll demonstrate that in a minute as well. Next to that, we have our three tape types, A, B, and C. They all sound slightly different. Tape A is gonna give you uh, what I'm describing as a little more gritty, a little bit more, um, you know, uh, color uh, than the other two. This is, kind of, according to the soft tube literature, this is kind of modeling the Studer uh, tape machines and what they w would have sounded like in, the, in a real analog studio. If you go to tape B, uh, that is gonna give you a little less grit and a little less color than tape A, but it's gonna give you a little more than tape C. It's kind of in the middle there. And that is kind of modeling the ATR-102 tape machine. Um, and then tape C, they don't really allude to what tape machine that is in the soft tube literature other than they say it's a British tape machine, which leads me to believe it could be the EMI tape machine back in the Abbey Road studio kind of thing. Um, and that's gonna give you even less grit um, and a little more open sound than tape B and tape A. So although they all sound a little similar, they all definitely have different sound characteristics. So it's pretty cool that they give you kind of three flavors, if you will, of tape, which is kind of nice. To the right of that, we have our tape speed, and we have five different tape speeds. We have 15 inches per second, which is the default here. We have 30 inches per second. We also have um, seven and a half, three and three quarter, 
and one and seven eighth tape speed. And as you can see here, hopefully you can see the detail here, as you get past uh, the seven and a half more towards the, 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 the thinner tape, or, or the, excuse me, the uh, slower tape, you're gonna introduce more noise than if you have on 30 inches per second. So the thing about tape speed in inches per second is the slower the tape runs, there's a couple of things that happen. One, the slower the tape speed, the more noise and hiss you're gonna get. And you're also gonna get a more of a compressed sound and it's gonna shave off the top end a little bit more. Now, depending on what your what your desired effect is, that could be that could be something that you want to run slower or something that you may not want. So you got to have to kind of experiment with that. Just be aware that the slower the tape speed, the no, the more noise you're going to get along with it. I typically 99% of the time on individual tracks, I'm usually running it, you know, maybe 15, 30, usually 15 on the individual tracks on the master bus, 30 typically, but it changes from track to track. It really depends. Um, it's rare that I'm ever down in the seven and three quarters or even, you know, the, the, the one and seven eighths, uh, almost never. But again, you can get some interesting sounds that way so you should experiment. Okay, now if you click on this little RC1 remote control little gray strip here, it opens up another side panel here with some controls which are useful. Uh, over here at the top, we have a dry wet where you can mix in the unprocessed uh, signal from tape with the processed signal. Um, I typically keep it on 100% wet, but you can do some interesting things with that. Um, the tape, the speed stability, um, you can have everything from very stable where it runs at a very stable um, speed, all the way up through wobbly, meaning that there's all kinds of variations in the tape speed. And that is something that was inherent in different tape machines, uh, you know, in the analog world. Um, I kind of keep it normally on a normal setting, but if you were to crank it up more towards wobbly, you're gonna get more of kind of a flangey, kind of a phasey kind of an effect, which could be desirable. Uh, let's say on maybe some clean electric guitars and things like that, strumming some chords that might be kind of cool to add that little bit of flanginess to it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And then down here, which I think is really useful, this high frequency trim control, which will allow you to add in or to cut some of the top end frequencies. So again, the thing about tape is the slower you run the tape, it's going to not only compress it, but it's going to shave off the top end a little bit, which nine out of 10 times for me is usually desirable to take off some of that harshness and to kind of clean and warm up that top end. But sometimes it can actually make the track sound a little bit dull and you want to bring some of that top end back in. Um, and a lot of times I would put an EQ and maybe give it a little bit of a boost up in that 7 to 10 range, just to maybe a dB or two to kind of bring back some of the top end that the tape kind of shaved off. Well, you can do that right here with the frequency trim, which I'll demonstrate, which is pretty cool. And then... Excuse me, last down here on the bottom, we have this crosstalk control. Now, when you're on the, um, the, the, the non-multi-track version of this, like we are here, what crosstalk is going to do is when you put it on, when you put it on a, um, on, uh, on, on separate tracks uh, or on a stereo, if this is a stereo, let's say on a bus or on a master out, what it's going to do is it's going to, um, it's going to take the left and right of that stereo instance and it's going to kind of uh you're going to have the left kind of bleed over to the right and the right kind of bleed over into the left and that happened with a real tape machine so the cross chalk is just going to kind of uh you know bleed the left and right in together if you're using this on the the cross talk on the mt version which we'll look in a second what that does is if let's say you're putting that across that's going to take um all of the tracks throughout your session and in a for example, if this was on um, a bass bus, and let's say you have, or, or a bass track, and let's say you have to the left of that bass track, you have like say a pair of overhead mics, and to the right of that bass track, you have a, say a pair of electric guitar tracks. What's gonna happen is it's gonna have some bleed coming from both the overheads and from the electric guitars into this bass tape plugin. Okay, makes sense. So uh, the more crosstalk you want, the more bleed over you're going to get. You would crank this up and the less you're going to crank, kind of break it down and you can even turn it off so there's no crosstalk at all. So the crosstalk, again, just adds an interesting sound characteristic to the signal, which was uh, inherent in analog uh, studios using real tape machines. Okay, then over to the right of that, we have our master levels going our input and our output. So if we want to hit the tape a little harder, we crank this up and then we can compensate by turning the output level down. And then over here, we have our noise. We could turn off the noise, all the tape hiss off, or we can have it on. Now, again, as I said, the slower you run the tape speed, the more noise you're going to get. And you can always turn that off completely. Or if you're running it at 15 or 30 ups per second, even with the noise on, it's not um, overbearing. So it adds a little bit of that tape hiss back into the signal and it is audible and that is the way a tape machine sounds and that might be desirable to you, it may not be. 
And then we have our stop and our run buttons here. Okay, so what I've done now is I've just kind of put this on a few different tracks. Again, this, this is a session that I imported. There's no mixing done to this at all. It's completely raw tracks, which is usually the way I like to kind of present some of these plugins because you can hear the effect a little bit more than something that's been completely mixed. Um, so I have it on a, on, a, on a bunch of drums here. I have it on a drum kit. Um, we have a kick, kick sub, snare, top and bottom, toms one and two, overheads left and right, room, a, a mid room mic and a room left and a room right. And then also a tambourine. I have the instance of the tape across all of those tracks. And then I have a bass amp here. I have the tape machine there as well. And then I have two electric guitars, rhythm electric guitars panned hard left and hard right. And we have the tape machine there. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to play back this piece of this kind of a uh, this kind of rock kind of a track for you with all the instances of the tape machine turned off. You can see all of the power buttons are turned off. And then about a third of the way or so, halfway through, what I'll do is I'll turn on the inserts and you'll see all the tape machines come on and you can just kind of hear the accumulative effect of what tape can do to your mix. And then what we'll do is we'll take, we'll isolate this on say maybe the bass and the guitars and just show you what the different tape speeds do, show you the different settings that we just spoke about so you can kind of hear the audible difference, okay? So this is without the tape machines on. We're in the off position right now. There's nothing on the master bus. There is nothing on the buses themselves. There is an instance on the drum bus, but it's bypassed and I'll actually remove it. So these are just on the individual tracks. And then I'll click this on and off. Just keep your eyes on the blue button so you can see them come on and off. Okay, here we go. Okay, so hopefully what you can hear there, what I can hear here, I don't know how it's going to come across on YouTube, is when you bring the tape machines in, the electric guitars get a little more present, the uh, the bottom end of the, of the drum kit and the bass get a little bit more thick, and it just gets a little bit more compressed sounding, which is exactly what tape does. Now, it's somewhat subtle, but it is uh, it, it is audibly there for sure. Um, so that's what it's doing across drums, bass, and guitars, okay, on a completely raw recording with no mixing, no EQ, no other compression, nothing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I just want to kind of show it to you, let's say on a bass, so we can hear the differences and walk through some of the controls here. So I'm going to mute all the drums, I'm going to mute the guitars here, and let's just listen to our bass. Okay, and let's open up our tape plugin. So let's start off with just here, seeing where we are from a level point of view. Okay, by turning this color all the way down, obviously we're not hitting the tape at all, there's nothing really going on there. As we start to crank this up. So this is tape A, which is gonna have the most color, the most grit. Turn this up a little so you can hear it. Tape B. Okay, so just by flipping through the three tape types without changing any other controls, what you should be able to hear, what I'm hearing here, is I'm hearing that A has a much thicker bottom end, has a little bit more grit to it, a little bit more color. When you go over to B, it gets a little more open sounding. The more upper mid range, you can kind of hear the upper mid range notes a little bit more. It gets a little thinner on the bottom end. And then C, it's even less uh, pronounced on the bottom end and the top end's a little bit more open sounding. So let me just flip through that again quickly. Now, 
how we can saturate these even more. I wanted to play with the tape speed a little bit. We're at 15 ips now. So this tape speed's a lot more subtle when you're just listening to it on one track. When you do this across an entire mix, you get a little bit more of an audible difference here. It's, it's, a, it's a little more subtle on a bass, but there is definitely um, a little bit more of an open sound as you get more towards the faster tape speeds. It doesn't sound as warm. It starts to sound a little less warm. Okay, now if we were to come over here and look at the side panel here again, we can, um, we can change keeping it on 15 imps. for the tape machine after. So it just adds that little bit of glue, a little bit of compression, thickens up that bass quite nice. Some of these other controls, it's not as audible on a bass. We'll try that on an electric guitar. So if we were to mute the bass and, uh, and, and solo up the electric guitars, here's kind of what we're getting. And I'll just stick with one guitar for now. Let's just solo up one here. a little bit more of a flanging effect when you turn this up to wobbly and you wobble the tape more it actually gets a nice a uh, little bit more of a phasey kind of a flanger vibe to it so you can add us adding back that high frequency as we're boosting this a little bit to give it a little bit more top end You can tend to hear the, the audible difference between the tape types a little bit more on this electric guitar. Again, the C setting is a little bit more open sounding, and we're not hitting this all. We're hitting it fairly hard here. Depending on how, how much color you want. And there's our stop button, which is kind of cool. We hit run. <laughs> Pretty neat. Okay, so on the electric guitar, again, you can see you got to play around with the controls here. But it adds a nice little flavor, nice little coloration to it. Again, you do, you do have different flavors, three different flavors of coloration and uh, tone characteristic if you'd like. So that is the, that is the single instance of the tape. Um, now let's take a look. Let's take a listen quickly. We're going to shut all the, uh, all the separate 
or all the single uh, instances of this across all these tracks here, uh, just so we could turn these off here. And then we're gonna take a look quickly at the um, at the one on the master bus here. So on the master bus, again, this is part of the PreSona Studio One mix engine. Um, and here is the tape MT, MT standing for multi-track. Now again, the only difference between the controls here is the fact that we don't have that little toggle switch over here on the left-hand side that uh, lets us meter between the total harmonic distortion and the actual input level. That's the only difference, everything else is the same. Now again, Remember that when we talk about the crosstalk, this is the other difference between these two instances of this particular plugin, that when you're on um, crosstalk, it's gonna actually take the bleed from the adjacent tracks uh, and they're gonna kind of bleed into each other. Okay, I explained that a little bit earlier. Um, so that's the differences here. Other than that, it's, it's, it's laid out exactly the same way. Now what's interesting about, let me open this again. What's interesting uh, about this for, for Studio One users is that when you have this, um, this button here, the pass-through highlighted or enabled, what's gonna happen is you only have to put this instance on your master bus. You don't have to put this across all the different tracks. Uh, when, you, when you enable pass-through, what's gonna happen is it's, oh, it's going to put the effect of this tape globally across all the tracks in your session. And if you wanna know how you know that or how can you visually see that, if you take a look um, at, the, at your individual tracks here, um, you can see this little, right above here, this little pink uh, button here, you can see, or this little pink light above the mute button, this is showing you what tracks that this multi-track tape machine is affecting, okay? And if I shut the pass-through off, you'll see those little, those little LED indicators kind of go away. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that my main output is on a bright color so I can kind of see it uh, there. So when I click pass-through, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's in this case, it's yellow. If, my, if you have the default color, uh, for your master output here. Uh, it's not always as noticeable, even though you see a little blue light here. And if you put your, your mouse over, it shows you um, insert sends, and it also shows you, oops, let me put it over there again, the mix of effect source. See that? So what I do is, again, I keep my master output on like a brighter color so I can easily see these little LED indicators. And what that means is when the pass-through is, is enabled, and this is just for Studio One users, by the way, because um, it's part of the mix engine, this is now being, that this tape is being placed on all the tracks that are in your session, and you can see that all here. And then what's gonna happen is the crosstalk control is gonna control the bleed, for example, between, let's say, the left overhead and the right overhead because those tracks are right next to each other in the console in the session, okay? So that's kind of how that works. So just by having this one instance on the mix bus, you're affecting everything in your session, which is really cool. And this is a very, very light on CPU, by the way. It's a very light, a very CPU-friendly type of a plugin. So if we were to just play back again, these the three groupings, the drums, the bass, and the guitars here, Okay, so if we were to un unmute all of this and we were to solo these up, solo the bass up, we have our two electric guitars soloed up. Now the tape machine is affecting all of these. We go through the tape types, you can hear the difference. You can hear all the distortion. You can hear when I turn up this color how everything gets really distorted because we're over we're oversaturating the machine. So here here's a great example of that. Just listen to the distortion. So as I dial it back.
So you can really hear when you have all these instruments in at the same time, and we're not just listening to a single isolated track, it becomes a lot more obvious. It becomes a lot more uh, colorful sounding. So what's great about this plugin is just between the, the three tape types and the tape speeds, just those things alone, you have a ton of tonal variations that you can get out of this. And by using things like the high frequency trim, you can really change and alter the sound quite drastically depending on your track. So I think it's a it's a really good plugin for that. And again, we're listening to just this one instance of the of the tape NT on the master bus, but it is affecting all the drums, the bass, and the two guitars because we're using this pass-through feature as part of the mix engine in PreSonus Studio One. So I think it's really, really cool. And, and, and hats off to PreSonus for being uh, for taking uh, this step forward and having a third-party plugin, an analog plugin I'm added to the Studio One mix engine. I think it's fantastic. And along with the console one, which was the um, the first attempt, PreSonus made to add some analog console emulation and vibe and color to the session. Um, between those two plugins together, you really got you know the makings of starting uh, uh, you know and getting that analog feel and vibe, which is really really cool. So now the question that a lot of people are going to have for me, we're not going to do this in this video. Well, how does it compare to the Slate Digital tape machine and all the other tape machines you have? I can tell you that I have the Slate Digital uh, VTM, which I've used for years. I really, really like. I have two tape machines by Universal Audio. I have the the Waves Crave uh, Kramer Master Tape. I have the, uh, the Abbey Road tape machine by Waves as well. Um, and now this, and I can tell you that um, they all sound a little different from each other. Um, they all have their own different flavors to them. You don't need to have seven tape machines plugins i just happen to have that how does this stack up to them well i really i really for the price for 79 bucks um, i really think it's great i think it's a great sounding tape machine i think again all the different tonal variations that you get that if you didn't own a tape machine plugin and you're looking to get into a tape machine plugin to add some of that analog vibe this is a great great choice you don't need to have any special hardware like you do with universal audio i do think this sounds better to my ears than say the cray the, the crave the Waves Kramer Master Tape, I like the sound of this a little bit better. Um, compared to the Slate Digital Tape Machine, what I like about this maybe over the Slate Digital Tape Machine is you have more tonal variations. You have three tape types, where on the Slate Tape Machine you only have two tape types. You have five tape speeds, where on the Slate Digital you only have two tape speeds, and you also have the addition of these extra controls for the high frequency trim, which I really like. I like the fact that you can do a dry wet thing, which is really cool as well, and the crosstalk is really cool as well. None of that is part of the Slate Digital VTM. So for those extra controls and tonal variations, I would say, to my uh, to my opinion, this is a, a, is, a, is a better choice than maybe the Slate VTM, although I think that is a great plugin as well. So uh, that's kind of my opinion on the Soft2 tape MT and the soft tube tape again I've only been playing with this uh, for a little bit so um, I have to take this on the road and test it out a little bit more but I like what I hear so far and I hope this video was helpful to some of my followers that have been asking me about this uh, again you know join me for the next video where we'll take a look at some other plugins and again head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com for all your home recording training needs and until the next video I've been David Vignola with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I'll speak to you guys all soon take care